Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be speaking about the sales cycle. Now, I want to know what does your sales cycle look like? Now, for me, the first thing is prospecting, right? Depending on the market that we're in, you're going to look for clients that would be interested or match your products and services, right? You're going to, how do you prospect? That's the first thing. How I prospect depends on the market is I use the regular diction, um, what's it called, directory. I search for persons in the regular directory. Or if I'm driving on the road and it's business person that I'm prospecting to and I see their advertisement on the road, I'll take down their, the name of the business, the number of the business. Sometimes if I'm prospecting a company and I want to speak to the employees, what I will do is I will search up the name of the business i will look who are the uh the movers and the shakers in the business decision makers in the business and uh, send emails to those decision makers now the when i make, make contact finally get a phone contact or make a call say i do i'm using cold calls now because i've gotten the information off the directory or off you know contact off the road or on the internet and i'm doing a cold call what do I do? I'll call, I'll introduce myself. If I'm with a reputable company, you know, that's game on for me. That's a plus for me. So I'll give them my name. I'll name the company. I'll name my, name my title and ask for whoever it is that I need, need to speak to. So I ask for John Brown. John Brown comes on the phone. I'm going to introduce myself to John Brown. State my company's, the, the company's name that I represent, my title. And I pause. Mm. What does that pause do? I give them the point, the the up the opportunity to object to say, um, what do you want? You know, whatever it is. If I pause and there's nothing after, um, after that, or they'll say, oh, yeah, how can I help you? I hit them with my value proposition there, right, to set up an appointment with them. And then and there, let me let me point out. I don't ask. When I make cold cold calls, I don't ask the person on the other line to tell me. I don't ask them, is this a good time? I never ask, is this a good time? Just think about it. When someone calls you and you don't know that don't know them and they say, Is this a good time to speak? What's the first thing you're thinking about saying? No, you've you've caught me at a bad time. I'm in a meeting. So I never ask that question. Right? I will say my name, company I represent, my title, pause. I give you the opportunity right there to object. And when you make that pause, they'll say, okay, go ahead, right? You hit them with your valid proposition there and you try to set up a, a meeting with them, right? So you tell them what you have to offer and that you like to further discuss with them what it is that you, you have to offer to them. You um, possibly propose is Monday, I'll say, is Monday at 10 o'clock good for you? And they'll say, oh, no, Monday at 10 isn't good. Uh, what about Tuesday at whatever? I don't ask them, when is a good time for you? Because a lot of persons don't know their calendar. So I'll just hit them with a date. Monday at 10, they may say yes, or they may say, okay, let me get my secretary to confirm the date. Hold, and they'll put you over to their secretary. But you just hit them with a date, a time. Let them say yes or no. All right, after, so... You have now gotten your foot in. You're going to be having this meeting with your client. So you go in now. You're having this meeting. What I use that meeting to do is to qualify my client. If they really are a best fit for the product or service. You get to know them. You get to know where they are in, in their life or in the space in terms of the product or service you have to offer. And where they need to go. And you match them with a product or service. Right? Now... Possibly I'm not, I'm not really as uh, aggressive in terms of sales because guess what? For me, I try to be transparent. I try to give you as much information as possible so you can never come back to me and say, I didn't know. So I provide to you the information and I, you have clients who will say, okay, yes, yeah, sign me up. Bam. Uh, or you can say to them, are you ready to sign? Dependent on, you know, the feel of the meeting. They're ready to sign. You hand them the paper. You show them where to sign. You tell them what they're signing. You get them to sign, okay? 
say they object. They say, you know what? No, I need to think this over. No problem. At that point in time, you say, okay, let's set up another meeting probably about next week, Thursday, 10 o'clock. Let them confirm a time for your next follow-up meeting, right? Okay. Now, remember, this next follow-up meeting, you're going to be dealing with objections, right? So you're looking to deal with the objections and to close the sale. So you come to this follow-up meeting. Think about all the rebutt rebuttals they can possibly come with. Ensure you know the market. You know what um, they could po possibly push to you to say, hey, but this person is doing. Know your market. Know your client, right? Know what's best for them. Be confident in what you're proposing to them. You, When you have this follow-up meeting, as they give you an objection, you reassure them and you tell them why it is the, your product is a best fit for them. When you're done uh, responding to all their objections, you try to close the sale. You give the, you, you take out the documentation, say, okay, are you ready now? Let's um, close this, um, this deal. We get them to signing, right? Any objection they come, say it's a, it's a sale that they need to pay. And they say, oh, I don't have cash. No problem. Let me take you to the ATM uh, to get this uh, payment done, right? Or I can take a check. Right, give them all the options in terms of making payments. Close your sale, right? When after you've closed your sale, this is a critical point, guys. Ensure you tell the customer what to expect thereafter. This is where we have customer service issues. If you tell them what to expect after, you tell them the timelines, you tell them what the process is like, you tell them about after sales, give them all the information they need, I assure you, you won't have customer service issues or customer service issues will be at a minimal once it is that you tell them everything to expect. Timelines, all the data, all the information. Be transparent with your customers or your clients, right? So, and, and also at this point, tell them what is the, the available um, mode or means of communicating with you, whether you chat, you're going to offer them WhatsApp or you're going to say, hey, ensure any problems, you shoot me an email, give me a call, you tell them what is available to you in terms of communication. Or if it is that's a contact center that needs to handle them thereafter, no problem. You give them the contact center's information, right? Now, remember, doing this will help you with customer retention, but once you've signed a customer, guys, depends on the type of sale that you're in. You want to retain this customer. You see where there's future business. You follow up. Be proactive with your customer, right? But this is that's another topic for another day. So the sales cycle we just spoke about. We prospect with our customers. We meet with them. We qualify them. We deal with the objections. We close the sale. Now tell me in the comments what does your sales cycle look like. All right. Bye, guys.